Hi, my name is Tommy Kelly. Hi guys and welcome back to another video. Uh, today what I want to touch upon is obviously my Go Vegan series basically talking about all the kind of animal cruelty that goes on in the meat and dairy industry. So today I want to touch upon about chickens and things like that. So like I say, chickens can obviously be very sociable. They obviously enjoy sunbathing and like turkeys love to dust bathe in order to keep clean. As with other birds, like I say, mother hens' desire to build a nest for the young is obviously very, very strong. They have a strong bond with their chicks, which begins even before they're hatched, with the chick and hen obviously calling to each other. Like I say, in the wild, ducks and geese spend much of their swimming and flying, and they obviously travel for hundreds of miles during migration. Like I say, geese choose one partner who will stay with them through thick and thin, whilst the ducks sleep in groups. The life of a broiler chicken and other birds growing for meat, like I say, in factory farms these birds are taken from their mothers before birth, thus being denied most of their natural types of behaviour. No water is provided for the ducks and geese to swim in and there is no chance of hens and turkeys to dust bathe as well. Like I say, obviously as well, they're crammed into little sheds where the stench of ammonia from their droppings is intense and often leads to respiratory problems and things like that. Selective breeding means that these geese, young geese and birds grow very, very fast. Mm -hmm. Their bones obviously have no time to become strong enough to obviously hold their weight. So like I say, many of the birds have broken bones and most have, lo have lost the ability to fly as well. Like I say, when it comes down to the, the killing of them and things, like I say, mm -hmm. birds are obviously often commonly hung upside down in shackles mm -hmm. by their feet. Push, push through a, a bath of electrified water, which could stun them before their obviously their throats are slit and things like that, and are killed at the rate of eight to ten thousand per hour and left to bleed to death. So like I say, it's absolutely shocking to think of all this. When it comes to the egg production, like I say, most laying hens are kept in battery cages with, with several birds to one cage. The amount of room in which each bird spends her life is off the, the same as a, an A4 sheet of paper or a microwave oven, if you can imagine it. Obviously as well, privacy is very important to egg laying hens, but is utterly denied to her because her desire to make a nest is obviously very strong. But again, this is simply not possible. Like I say, in 2012, it, it was expected that legislation would be passed banning the use of conventional battery cages for laying hens across Europe. Although the World Trade Organization rules means that it probably didn't happen, like it didn't happen, furnishing cages would, be, would obviously mm -hmm. be allowed, which would have slightly more room, but many, if not at all, have problems that conventional cages have. So obviously, like I say, just like hens in battery cages, free-range and barn hens are obviously de-baked, are often de-baked, as in the battery system, half all ch chicks are gassed at a day old because their males and hens know mm -hmm. good for obviously egg laying. In these conditions, hens that obviously fight to prevent mm -hmm. them from obviously being de-baked by having the tip of their beak obviously sliced off. And like I say, this is an absolutely agonising procedure that they go through, leaving the hens in pain for days. It has been found that obviously hens who have been debaked using their beaks except for feeding. So it's absolutely... Obviously as well, going on to things like fish, f obviously talking about fish and pain. Like I say, not only do fish obviously feel pain, they're obviously very sensitive to stimuli. Like I say, some of their senses are far more developed than others. Fish are obviously highly responsive to touch and feeling an incredible sense of smell. They have obviously sensory hairs along their backs that allow them to detect gentle currents and vibrations in the sense of motion of other animals. Obviously as well, like other animals, fish use the sensation of pain to help them feel to survive. It helps them they, they have entered a dangerous situation which they should obviously withdraw immediately. It is pain that obviously motivates a fish to fight vigorously when it's hooked in a desperate attempt to obviously get away. Let's see, when it comes to the net losses of life, let's see, various types of nets are obviously used in sea fishing, including things like drift nets and bottom trawls and things like that. 
drift nets maybe over two miles long, like I say. Fish then swim into the net, become trapped by the gills, and obviously they want to get back out. So like I say, marine mammals such as obviously seals and obviously things like porpoises and things obviously become trapped and drawn when unable to obviously reach the surface to obviously breathe. But I say bottom trolls are often dragged to the seabed and, and as well as catch every other species mm -hmm. and obviously the seabed as well. But I say fishing has obviously devastated the oceans as well. No, like I say the United Nations Food and Agriculture Organization estimates that all 17 of the world's major fishing areas have either reached or exceeded the natural limits, and nine are in obviously serious decline as well. So I say overfishing, obviously. Overfishing, like I say, obviously is a serious impact in obviously the ecosystems, obviously since other fish, birds, marine mammals, and obviously smaller organisms that, that, that are dependent on fish to obviously survive are affected. When it comes to fish farming, like I say, the, the rearing of farmed fish can obviously be compared to other types of factory fishing. With limited space, the fish can barely exercise, like I say, injuries to their snout and fins are obviously very, very common. Let's like see, they're generally caused by rubbing against the net or collision or obviously aggression between other types of fish and breeds. Let's like see, wild salmon obviously they migrate over hundreds of miles and it's commonly frustrated by obviously keeping them in a small static cages that fish farming obviously involves. So let's like see, the stocking density of salmon is obviously equivalent to keeping basically, like, if you can imagine it, a two foot salmon in a bath basically whilst trout even have less space to move. Obviously as well, before things like the slaughtering things, fish are obviously starved for up to three weeks in maximum, sometimes even uh, more. But like I say, they may even be killed by obviously electrocution and things like that, which is, you just can imagine the pain that they actually go through. Obviously it be things like a blow to the head where a club had been frozen to death on ice, which is very, very prevalent on things like, uh, when you think of things like uh, crabs and things like that and obviously other types of things they, that's the way they're killed as well obviously as well alternatively the fish's gills arches are cut and are torn and life is obviously drained out of them which you can imagine as they try to bleed they've obviously bleed to death in a tank which is an excruciating death for them I mean you can just imagine it guys it's really really just bears to think about I say fish farms may be rife with disease, so I say large quantities of the chemicals that are used to obviously attempt to control it. But I say DEFRA has obviously noticed that to date there are, there are no easy con treatments for any of these diseases, like I say carp disease, trout, BKD, and obviously salmon disease. But I say ironically, obviously, as well, fish farming obviously affects wild fish or obviously farm to fish such as sam obviously fed to the fish sorry to like salmon as well trout and cod it obviously takes up to three tons of wild fish to produce one ton of farmed salmon and up to five tons to produce a ton of farmed cod or haddock uh, obviously as well talking about pigs and obviously we all know pigs people love their, their bacon and things like that but i would also like to say that i don't recommend everybody go vegan like i say people that have got eating disorders and many other illnesses it's just not possible for them even if you can do a thing like a meatless monday or a couple of meals each week where you can go vegan every little bit helps and nobody should be militant towards anybody about going vegan these videos are just to educate people and how we should try and do every little bit we can but like I say, whether that just be a few meals a week. Obviously as well, like touching upon pigs, like I say, pigs are obviously sociable, tactile, and obviously very, very inquisitive animals. They actually say that pigs are actually some of the most uh, intelligent animals out there. They obviously like to control in the mud to keep cool and protect their sensitive skin from obviously the sun and things like that. They're obviously very, very clean, which is a lot of people don't understand. They think pigs are obviously very, very dirty animals, which is far from the truth. And obviously, given the chance, they will always keep their latrines separate, obviously, from their living quarters and things like that. So basically, they don't, they don't like any dirt in their living quarters. That's something that a lot of people don't understand. Obviously, in a more natural environment, the sow will obviously build a nest to up to three feet for obviously our babies. In the factory farm, obviously, the sow is obviously given a concrete floor with no straw, no resting instinct. Is obviously, is, that's totally 
frustrated for her. Obviously, the sow can obviously barely move and often ends up crushing some of her piglets, as you can well imagine, because of the very, very constraint limits that she's got there. But I see the sow's piglets are obviously taken away after three weeks, causing great distress to obviously the mother and the babies. The piglets are obviously still reliant upon their mother at this time, and in a natural environment would obviously still be suckling upon her as well. So basically, if you can imagine it, you've got breastfeeding a baby has been taken away from you. How's it going to survive? How's it going to nurture without the mother? Very same thing. But I say most piglets obviously have their te teeth clipped and their tails cut off to stop them fighting and tail chewing, which you can just imagine that. But I say they're put into small pens as well and metal cages after about only six weeks. Obviously they go to get fattening pens where they have little room to move and never get fresh air and things. But I say they're very, very intelligent, inquiring minds, and obviously dulled down by a boredom and total lack of stimulation in these type of things. Obviously, as well, the, the pigs are killed by obviously the very same kind of way, stunned electric tongs or gas, hoist it up one leg to the other, and obviously things like their throat slip, which they claim is to a human, a humane way of de doing it. Absolutely far from the truth, guys. There is no humane way of doing this. But I see they're often put into a tank of boiling water to remove their, their bristles and things like that as well. It's estimated, obviously, in the UK that approximately a million pigs a year regain consciousness, obviously, before they die from loss of blood. There are obviously reports of pigs being boiled alive because they've obviously been stunned properly. So it's just, it just doesn't be... Obviously, as well, another one I want to touch upon is obviously things like with little bugs and things, tiny creatures behind things like honey, silk, and shellac. But I see honey, silk, and shellac are obviously produced by using bees, moths, and lack insects. Obviously, as well, being such tiny creatures, their needs are obviously often overlooked. But I see this is very unfortunate because thousands are required to yield a small amount of honey, silk, and shellac. Honey, obviously, bees are obviously social insects who live in a well-organised colony, let us say, mm -hmm. work together to keep the colony running smoothly, protecting and feeding one another and undertaking many different tasks together. Let us say, beekeepers obviously take the bees' honey and to replace it often feed them artificial pollen substitutes and white maple syrup and things like that. Oh, it's white, white sugar syrup, sorry, I get that totally wrong. I don't know what I was thinking about maple, sorry about that. But I see, obviously as well, the honeybee flies about 500 miles in their working lives and produces half a teaspoon of honey. But I see, much of this is obviously taken away. Obviously talking about silk, I see, this is obviously produced by a silk cocoon is obviously basically spun by the silk worm caterpillar, but obviously manipulating a thin silk thread in a figure of eight movement. But I say once the caterpillar is ready to turn into a moth, obviously she must break free from the cocoon, the cocoon and obviously to emerge. This process would obviously, I say, destroy much of the silk. Therefore, obviously, the majority of moths are obviously killed by being immersed in boiling water or dried in, a, in an oven as well, which is absolutely disgusting. But I say it takes hundreds of silkworms just to make one silk scarf or tie. Obviously, shellac as well, That's this is a, a secretion produced by the lac insect, as it's a protective coating, basically. But I say the secretion is obviously scraped off from the trees in which they live and turned into shellac. Some of the insects are scraped off at the same time and obviously die. So basically, how can we help? Like I say, as well as going vegan for the animals, there's a whole host of, of other reasons, like I say. We obviously want to help deforestation, water pollution, global warming. Do you obviously want to avoid con contribution to hunger of the, wor the world's poorest people, like I say? Do you want to look after your own health? So like I say, every little bit you can do, whether that be a meatless Monday, whether that be a few meals a week, but like I say, not everybody can go vegan. I especially don't recommend it for people with eating disorders because it can keep you in an eating disorder. Obviously with myself, I have been doing eat being vegan and eating disorder recovery because I have got an eating disorder team who's fully support my, my recovery in that. 
but not everybody has that and I, I, I know that it keeps a lot of people in, in their eating disordered mindset and it can do that so I don't recommend it for everybody obviously a lot of people have things like cancers and things like that where they, they obviously can't go vegan such as in my life but every little bit you can do what like I say helps so I hope you have liked this video guys and I'll speak to you all in the next one where I'll be doing more things getting into where we get all the vitamins and being vegan and such and such like as well and I'll speak to you all soon and send you all my love and remember binge on life, purge negativity and star guilty feelings. Remember guys, binge on life, purge negativity and star guilty feelings. Speak to you all soon and love you so much.